there's some injected manure ground and there there's also a nice pool or GEA manure tanker sat in there yeah some chisel plowed ground or is that moldboard plowed that's moldboard plowed well we're on a little bit of a road trip here it is Tuesday afternoon it's Oh, it's like 25 after 6, April 25th, and we are headed out to Hainsworth Farms. Hainsworth Farms, they sell their own manure tankers. They're a dealer for Moss trailers. We've bought three Moss trailers from them now. We have bought a manure trailer. And we are headed out to Chuck's place now. He is going to give us a little bit of a walk around of some of the items that he has uh, for sale. And the manure tankers that he builds and so on and so forth. So we're just passing by some of these farms here. They're rather nice. I don't know know the name of that one there but it doesn't matter because yeah so we'll be hit to his place in maybe a half hour or so and he's going to give a little bit of a tour of his place and uh, then we'll head out and get back home here what is that GSI Got some augers there and so on and so forth. So the land lays a little differently here than how it lays in our area. It seems to be a little more wide open. I don't know what that facility is there, but I don't know if that's a custom outfitter there or if it's, uh, it's another farm. So it's a little more wide open here. I don't know if this is Geneseo County or Genesee County or what have you here. But uh, it's been a little while since I've been out into uh, this area. I think it's been a few years to be exact. The first Moss trailer that we bought from Chuck was in 2019, 2020 somewhere around there so that was three or four years ago Livingston County we're heading into Livingston County so we had gotten some rain showers here and there throughout the day and today was about the best day of any to make this road trip out into Western New York which is about two hours from uh, our dooryard right at the moment um, Kaz equipment is putting a product improvement program into our uh, corn planter we ended up putting that uh, new system in our planter and then of course John Deere has gone through and figured out that there was a couple of things they wanted to change with that new upgrade system that they sold us and a lot of everybody else here. So Kaz Equipment was working on that today. I unhooked from the disc ripper, hooked the 8320R onto the corn planter, pulled it out of the building that it was stored in, put it in the shop, then I hooked back onto the disc ripper. I had some work to do to it. Looks like they got a nice rice lake scale there and a fair amount of grain storage so at any rate I had to do some uh, work to the disc ripper and then I ended up leaving the farm about 4 30 or so the boys are hauling manure and we're gonna get out to Chuck's place here like I said, he's going to give us a little bit of a tour, and then we're going to get on our own way here. So, 
We'll be to uh, his place in, I don't know, half hour or so, 20 minutes. And uh, we'll join up with you once we get to his place. So stay tuned. Well, we're just pulling into Chuck's place here. Well, I texted him 20 minutes ago. Told him I was going to be right here. Well, he's got me parking right up next to his office here. So he's going to give us a little bit of a tour. We'll touch base with you in a few minutes here once we get acclimated to uh, what's going on here. So I just jumped into uh, Chuck's pickup with him. He's going to give us a little bit of a walkthrough of the equipment that he has for sale. You've got something over in the field over there too, you yeah, might? Yeah, we got a Jumbrook 9,500 gallon spreader over there in the field. And uh, I'll have uh, one of the guys jump in that and we'll come across the field and do a little spreading with that. That's a big four axle uh, or uh, two axle four wheeler uh, with a big 35.532 tires on it. Uh, no steer, just a very simple style spreader with no no, uh, no chassis maintenance compared to all this terrible stuff so yeah this is our lower yard here where we we've got a lot of inventory of product silage trailers manure tankers and lagoon pumps um, everything's for sale yeah, huh? everything's for sale so it, uh, we'll swing over here by all uh, these dry hill lagoon pumps I got 8 inch and 10 inch pumps over here we got trailers sitting here for sale moss trailers 36 footers or a couple of trailers for sale. There's a trailer somebody did a little uh, little rollover with. Custom. Yeah, a little custom operation there on that one. Mm, nice red and black yep, one. That's red, our colors. Yeah, that's one of your favorite colors there. That's <laughs> the ones we like to get for you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, and then we got uh, all the dry hill lagoon pumps here, the uh, which we'll pull in here and then right over here, the dry hill 12 by 35 load stand. Uh, nice big heavy unit. Um, and it's got a hydraulic pump jack on it for raising it up and down. We put that with our, our 10 inch pumps. We like to put that 12 inch load stand with there. And then uh, Dry Hill's got a nice 10 by 30 galvanized load stand here also that comes, uh, that comes with a hydraulic pump jack on it. Comes with a basket kit for pulling your pieces around. And then at the end that jumps from 10 up to 12. The 12 inch over there jumps from 12 to 14 at the far end on the discharge point. And uh, so the, uh, these dry hill pumps, this is the Outback series pump where we uh, eliminate the gearbox and we go to a, a vertically mounted pump assembly on there and uh, with a direct inlet um, and we get rid of that maintenance that comes along with that gearbox, which I'm a big fan of this system there. These, this 10 inch pump is a 9,500 gallon a minute pump. Uh, over here, we've got an eight inch pump with a the new cast white iron cast pump that Dry Hill's got on. You want to walk over and take yeah, a look at that? Walk over and take a look at the fan. Yeah, this is the Outback system here with the AR500 housing on it and uh, with their propeller set up on it. And they put a hitch on there so you can pull your load cart hmm. along with it too. And then they're running all stainless lines down the sides of these pumps now. Okay. And, uh, which is a nice upgrade. These are both. Uh, uh, the standard pump here with a they open up to uh, 16 feet wide for stability when you've got that nozzle working around there oh, Okay, and then this is the new cast pump assembly here with, uh, Which is a new white iron pump assembly for the guys that are writing sand all the time which is this has got uh, Probably triple the wear time on this versus the standard AR pump which is a nice setup there. And uh, they're just ready to start offering a new uh, cast propeller too, hmm. which is coming out here next within the next two to four months. No so, kidding. you know, we eliminate all that maintenance with that gearbox and all we've got in here is a bearing house extension with an oil filled bath here to protect, to drive the system into there and, and, uh, and uh, keep that maintenance down on that. Dry Hill's got a nice, they've gone to a worm gear drive system on the nozzles so that uh, worm gear won't allow that nozzle to uh, move while it's under operation. Which is, mm -hmm. is a nice setup on that. And stainless lines are a nice upgrade down the side here for maintenance in the long run. And uh, on the 10 inch pumps, they offer the knife valves on the front to go between the load and agitate. 
So you can actually still see that when it's down in the pit here because this is still visible at the front. This pump will probably 9,500 gallons a minute. This eight inch out back is probably around 8,000 gallons a minute with this pump system. This is a 62 by eight. This is a 52 by 10 here. Both these will swing down the left side or right side, whichever side you're pumping off. This is the, uh, this oil uh, reservoir right here is what you can monitor the oil in your, in your uh, bearing house extension. Here's this one right here. So you monitor that. If you have any oil loss, you know you would have a seal there failure that you can monitor from up on the top. So, nice system. So we've got a couple of load stands, James Way load stands, and they've got just a, it kind of works like an elevator. You crank a cable winch. This yep. one's got hydraulic cylinder. And then it's got a lock with, mechanism here so you can lock it. Kind of like a porta power setup. Instead of hooking a tractor to the hydraulics, you just run that yeah. handle there and better than a cable and a so, winch you know the bigger we go with that load pipe the, the more we drop foam issues when you're dropping discharge pressures so even putting a 12 inch load pipe with even an 8 inch lagoon pump trying to drop foam problems is everybody's oh really hmm. yeah that's that's always going to be a help because lowering that discharge pressures always a plus so hmm. come on we'll jump back in we'll take a ride okay go take a look at some more stuff so in case you're wondering why that dump truck power unit thing sitting there he um buys these what the heck do you call them? haul trucks haul trucks in they're usually not running and he cuts the power unit off the front and makes a which he's going to show us that in a while yeah. here so we have more inventory over here silage trailers and then we've got one haul truck sitting right here that's uh, all built up and it's a unit been out on rental. So this is a haul truck rear end that you would pull with a Articulated tractor. tractor, that's a 35 ton haul truck. So you're gonna wanna put that behind an articulated tractor. When we get down to the 25 and the 30 tons, then you can put those behind a front wheel assist tractor. Okay. So that, uh, that's where we kind of size them for tractor sizes, depending on what you got. You got a 6,750 gallon noon spreader there that's for sale. And, uh, and then tank inventory down through here of all uh, equipment that's scheduled to, to get built. And we got some flatbeds for sale and straight tankers for sale. Stainless three compartments for sale and and some dump trailers also for sale. Good. So So where are these spreaders so made? These spreaders are made up in Canada, just over the border here. It's only 160 miles up in Ontario, Canada, from uh, the company by the name of Jembrook. And uh, they build anywhere from 6,500 to 14,000 gallon four axle steerable unit. Um, this uh, this is a 9,500 gallon four wheel spreader. And uh, so, got a nice spread pattern, very simple spreader.
Well, Chuck's gonna give us a little bit of a walk around of this spreader. Yeah, so 12, 35,000 pound hubs, six inch spindles and axles underneath there. Andy, maybe you can get underneath there and get a shot of that. That sub chassis. Is, what do you got, brakes on yep. the front axle or both All axles? So All axles? Eight, eight calipers on this uh, unit there is what you so got to put on. There's two calipers on each. Yep. Two calipers on each, each tire. Each wheel. So it's mm. six inch spindles on it. And then all the grease lines are tied in back here. I'll come up forward to a uh, central point um, for some suspension. And I'll show you where that is here. So nice little deal that Jembrook did for me. They put a grease gun system in here. We got grease on board. Oh, we no pumped kidding. that four or five times. We're greasing that whole chassis back. Oh, yeah. Huh. So that's a nice little addition on there. That's a real simple deal to put on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you got a haven't got a hit. Oh yeah, you sixteen got, zerts. Yeah, you're just you haven't got to chase it around. Whacking it. They build a massive draw bar assembly in the front here that's really built heavy. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and then we've got a swing open door on here with a jack shaft system that can be taken off, and you can swing that door open if you've got to get in there and do maintenance. Mm -hmm. Brake mm -hmm. systems over there tied into the hydraulics of the tractor, and uh, and then the PTO line coming up through there. Mm -hmm. So. It, uh, it's a nice unit. We really, we're really, we're really liking it, and the, and the folks that have bought them there have been happy with them. They also have a sump underneath here, underneath the inlet or the trough. There's an eight-inch capped-off system. You can add a eight-inch knife valve onto that, and if you get stones or anything in there, oh, okay, the cap, like a stone you can trap. Open yeah. Just dump those stones. Yeah. If you hear them going into the propeller, hmm. and that's just an option that can be had. You can also add knife valves down through the bottom of it if you want to add two or three and tie those okay. into hydraulics. Yeah. So if you've got sand and you want to open up the bottom mm -hmm. and dump that sand out of there, coming mm -hmm. off that trough, that's an option on anywhere down through there. Yeah. So, but the, uh, and then the injector system in the back is set up here. So if you do want to add an injector, the mounting brackets are in here and then the rings are down through underneath it so you can string the hoses down through. Mm -hmm. So, but we'll uh, let's slip up to the shop and we'll uh, we'll run around up the shop. Right All right. Now. All right. So we did the walk around of that spreader and we're now up to Chuck's shop and he's just going to give us a walk around of some items that he has up around his shop here. What have you have here? What do you? What's this? So here? I got a 2007 Kenworth T800 uh, that uh, is for sale. Sitting here, another piece just for sale with 18 speed in it, uh, Cummings motor in it, 20 front, 46 rears on a double frame, and it happens to have a 20,000 pound lift axle on it too. Hmm. Uh, a nice clean truck come out of Illinois here that uh, is sitting here. What would you say that's got for an engine? In it? Uh, ISX. ISX. Cummings. Four, what was it 475 horse hmm. so that's uh very that's rare to get a double frame truck here you know set up the way you want it. what's truck, the yeah. ratio you know Four, offhand? Uh, yeah 433s 433s yeah is what's in that double frame yeah this is set up what size tanker is this this is an 8400 gallon crude oil tanker uh double conical so we'll come over here to the other side and we can show you where the This style of tank here drops the lowest point is in the middle. So we've got the pump mounted in the middle coming off. We've got a 12 inch knife valve underneath there so you can close off the inlets. Your pump system on here. We put a bearing house extension between the pump and the motor so we isolate that for any issues of leakage uh, of oil going into that or back and forth. Uh, this is a 2012 Air Ride trailer. Uh, these crude oil trailers are a thick, heavy, duty, strong trailer. It, uh, and this one's set up with a field spread option on it. It's set up with remote control on it. Um, we've gone right through that trailer. New airbags, uh, brand new uh, tires all the way around on it. And uh, new brakes, new drums. And uh, that trailer just got finished up here a day or two ago. It's got full remote control on it. So you can just sit in the cab and run the, run the remote and swing the boom over and start and stop the whole... Uh, the whole uh, system on there without having to leave the cab of the truck. Hmm. So, what's a ballpark figure of the price on this that's, trailer? That's in the mid 60s. Mid 60s. Yep. 
is where that that's so he has several trailers that are set up and that'll give you a ballpark figure of what one like this is this one by the time this video hits the airways might be sold but another one like this is somewhere yeah. in that sixty thousand dollar range so yeah so we stock all uh, brakes drums and everything that goes along with building all those trailers from all the fenders um all the brakes all the hub pilot conversions springs that uh brake shoes landing gear and uh all the way over here to all the upper couplers that go on the trailers we sell a lot of upper couplers that uh guys wear those out with enough mileage on them and uh, they bolt right onto the tankers hmm. that uh We've got all our pump systems over here that we build with. And, uh, and then we stock all the suspension parts, equalizers, hangers, torque arm, torque arm bushings, equalizer bushings, and, uh, and the whole setup there for everything that we need when we're working on trailers and running them through the shop. Now we're in one of Chuck's shops yeah. here. We're in the main shop here where we're stocking all the parts propellers, drive shafts, drive lines, and we'll just step over here. This is a, the beginning of the parts inventory system here where we have stocking all the pieces down through here, hydraulics, remote controls, and every piece that goes into building trailers. Hmm. So we do all our shipping. We end up shipping lots of parts out to customers that are looking for pieces and parts all the time. Coupler assemblies there for eight inch, 10 inch, six inch, and uh, and then everything that comes along with building trailers, bearing house extensions, hydraulic motors, all the flanges that it takes to mount everything up, all the aluminum parts that goes onto a trailer, knife valves for everything. These are all eight inch knife valves here that we stock. All the rotator rings here for the booms that, uh, for swinging all the uh, booms over on everything, hmm. along with gearboxes for lagoon pumps, um, and we stock all that product. All the splash pans, hoses, fittings, lay flat hose up here, and uh, more hydraulic motors here. And then we go down through the production site here where we've got a 10 foot shear over here, and, uh, and then we've got a big 12 foot press brake over here for press brake and stuff. It, uh, Here's another rock truck that we're just finishing up. This is a 30 ton unit here. It's a so, bungalow unit. When we first started, when we first got here, we seen the, the power unit, which would be the front end of this. He cut that off and added this hitch on. Those power units, the engines are either shot, transmissions yep. are yep. shot or yep. what have you. Yep. And then the rest of the unit, the bed portion of it, it's still good. He puts this hitch on there. Yeah, and then we'll put a full rollover hitch on here. We put a full swivel hitch on here. That, that's that. Turn it all the way around and tie all that back in. We put grease fittings on here and here. Mm -hmm. So all that, and we put grease fittings on this point here. So all that gets greased, fill the whole draw bar up through fabricate it all on and then we go through and do whatever suspension work needs to be done and uh, if there's any torque arms or bushings or anything that's shot we go through and, and redo all that unit and so so who was doing the work on this was garth, garth doing garth, the work garth, on garth that yeah. all this right here <laughs> and garth is the master welder and uh you take a look at this and then we're going to walk over because he's right in the middle of building a new draw bar uh today and yesterday and uh he was working away on this all afternoon and and uh this is uh wow this is what he's just worked on through the day this is the start of it this goes on to a one inch plate and then we fabricate all this stuff on here look at those welds yeah real nice shot of that in. yeah those welds are an impressive weld here when we tie that bar onto there real but, nice uh, yeah he lays the pattern down through there and we'll fabricate that whole thing up and that's on its that's being built for a 35 ton unit right now that uh that's coming in and then over here's all the circles 
these are all the laser cut circles here that uh, tie all back into the swivels. Hmm. And we use a 14 inch for the 35 ton, we use a 12 inch for the 30 tons. So, we've, uh, here we're just starting production on another trailer here. We're doing some suspension work and, and uh, we're just getting ready to put this thing into production here once we get some suspension work so these, done on it. So these tankers that he gets in, he is retrofitting a oil or fuel tanker into a manure uh, tanker. So this has got, what has it got? Eight bays on it, two, four, six, seven different compartments on it. Yep. Now and it's one, two, three, four. It's a five compartment trailer. Five compartment. I think it's a 9,200 gallon. It totals out. There's baffles all the way down through there. And uh, we'll go through and we got to modify those baffles to get that manure. Because when this gets set up and going, we'll unload this trailer in three minutes, 9,200 gallons mm. coming off. So we've got to get that manure to flow down at a high rate of speed mm -hmm. to get it out of there. So, so he redoes the suspension, new springs, new springs bushings, brakes. Yep. So this is just the one side of the shop there, and then we come over to this side, the next production side of the shop. Got all our hardware here, and, uh, and then the next side of this shop, we're just over here. All the equipment's getting ready to be put on. It's a 10,500 gallon trailer we're working on right now. Hmm. Triple axle air ride. That's another crude oil trailer, but it's a straight round. So we'll do we'll do uh, the discharge in the back of this, not in the center. Hmm. So these uh, these make a nice unit. They've got all in tracks air ride suspension underneath them, and uh, got a bunch of customers that have been jumping up to that 10,500 gallon trailer. Hmm. So here's a little thing you'd like, Andy. This is my fluid filled setup here. <laughs> so this is how I... He's watched. got an extreme. Yeah, I watched Andy up there with his fluid film system, so I took it to a little better extreme. We got a barrel and we got the black product, and uh, we put a uh, Wagner power system on the top of that, and then we go right with a gun on here. So this system here is, uh, is a nice system. I did a vehicle over the weekend with this, and uh, it'll lay down a nice, nice pattern of material right wow. on which is pretty nice and pretty fast. Yeah, so you can get that fluid film in a uh, black or you can get it in a tan. Yeah. You know, and this is a nice product that we've been we've been installing this on trailers if anybody's requesting it. That's a that's a slick system. That little pump on there just does a beautiful job. We put a drop tube down into it. And that's just a uh, great go got from the Sherwin Williams dealer. It's a Magnum 5X. Hmm. Just an airless sprayer with a gun on it works slicker than heck and uh, fast and we put a wheel cart underneath there we can roll this right around <laughs> right on the job and I like it we put it here put a pickup over the pit here the other day and just walk underneath there and shoot the whole bottom of it yeah so that, that pits we got a full pit that works here we use this for installing wet lines we install wet lines for customers on trucks and, hmm. uh, so there's a nice little uh what is this? A little 4,000 pound, 3,500 pound electric yeah. system there, which is really nice and nimble for getting around. Yeah. It, uh, so all the welders and stuff we got. This is, this is a beautiful unit that I bought probably seven years ago, and it's 30, 90 ton Scotsman iron worker. It's got a punch system over here that'll punch up to, what, inch and an eighth on one inch thick steel. Hmm. It's got a 24-inch shear in the middle. It's got a notcher on this end, and then it's got a press brake up here. Hmm. And this thing here, I'll turn this on here because this is uh, a beautiful little system. So let's turn it to the shear mode. Let's bring this around here. You can put your camera right in there, Andrew. We'll clamp that down. That's three-eighths plate. Cut that right off. Then the knob system on here is, is a beautiful system. If you're trying to do a little notch work, take the corners off something, that notch system is a nice wow. deal for just doing any kind of any kind of trinkety work. That and that notcher is an animal when it comes to cutting material. Look at that. Huh. Three-eighths thick. 
Wow. Just cuts it like butter. Yeah. And uh, that notcher is just a nice piece. The guys are using this machine every darn day around here. Huh. It's, uh, trying to do just any kind of form work, any kind of custom. Just do that, and it's just a whatever you want to cut with that thing. They make this in a what a 50 ton, a 90 ton, a 120 ton, and, uh, and then this, this whole system up here is a whole tool here for that, which you can you can jog up and down. You bring your bring your uh, unit underneath here, and you can bend metal with this. We don't use this as much because I've got the big 250 ton press break out there. And then you come down to the whole punch unit here on this end, and you can do any of your punch units down here on this end. For punching stuff, and we've got a full array of punches. We use that to build those rock trucks that'll punch a, a, a one inch hole right through a one inch plate. Hmm. And uh, that, that machine is worth every penny. Of uh, well, something back. I need. Oh, you need that in the worst way, Andy. I don't know how you could be without it. The uh, out in the back there's where we do all we do painting out here. We do hydraulic. Uh, all the hoses and stuff that we make for all the equipment here, and uh, on our whole hydraulic bench with our press and all this stuff here. Hmm. So. And then back here, we also do strip down and tear down of, of all the trailers that we get in. We've got to pull all this equipment off here, take it all down and eliminate all that product and then start our way through production on that stuff. So we've got some nice space here where we, where we do stuff. And everything's laid out real nice here, Chuck. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, There's the trough right here. So this is the trough that goes into a standard trailer with a rear fill. That trough gets put all the way up underneath that tank and welded all in, tied in, and then that comes back and we uh, start the from pump. there with the knife valves. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just starting over here with that production on, on this right now, where that trough all gets put back in through this trailer here. And I'll put in and then we'll build from that point out with a rubber coupler, we'll mount the pumps on here and then we'll start everything building up across the top of that hmm. system. It, uh, so that's a, that's a nice piece and, and then uh, I guess over there we've got our, we've got a big uh, 100 ton press over here that we use for pressing bushings in and out. Hmm. But, uh, that's a nice piece. And that's set up with uh, that's set up with a twin system on it, which is, makes it super nice. So if you've got lighter stuff to do, but, uh, you've got a high speed press over here for operating a little bit of lighter stuff bushings, which hmm. is nice. Then this is our slower, bigger uh, press for doing the major press and stuff. This is 200 ton, you said? Yeah, I think this is a 200, 100 ton of press. Hmm. And uh, that's a nice piece, but this little high-speed one on the end there, we use a lot too for just pushing work. Hmm. Comes with its own power unit over here. Crank the winch for winching it up and down for height on that stuff. So, Very nice. But, uh, hmm. but, yeah, you said you were looking for forklifts. <clears throat> yeah, that's a nice unit here. Nice Day one. woo. Yeah, it's a good little forklift. Yeah, you'd be happy if you stumbled across one of that with air yeah. tires on. It's just mm -hmm. what you want. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's uh, well, that'll give us a, I'll well, give you guys a pretty good idea of what Chuck does here, Hainsworth Farms. But everybody's probably asking why the hell I'm here. 
Go, oh, yeah. Well, you know, there, I guess we'll have to go outside in a minute here. Yeah, and let's take a walk outside yeah, before, we, yeah. before we lose all the daylight. Yeah, lose the daylight. Find out the real reason. Yeah. You came down. <laughs> Well, you might have spotted this trailer while we were walking around this one. And this is kind of the reason why I'm out here. I'm picking up this fuel trailer. So this is the real reason Andy came down today was to pick up his new fuel tank, which is the Moss 990 uh, fuel trailer. And they offer that in a 550, a 750, and a 990. This one's coming with the optional def tank on the front, with stainless steel tank. Got a solar panel here for charging the battery that runs the pump system on here and uh, and then fills on either side. And uh, and then we come back down through the side here. Moss builds these with a tail on them so you got some extra space for some, for some other stuff. So for Andy, we took a little extra time and we built him a, uh, we took one of the fuel or one of the boxes that comes off the uh, fuel trailers. We put it on here for Andy. We put a second shelf in it. So he could keep his oil in here and his uh, antifreeze and his grease gun in here. And uh, we threw that on there. We mounted it on a nice rubber pad. And uh, that's gonna give him a little extra carrying capacity here. And then this unit's coming with a, coming with a 20 gallon a minute uh, hydraulic pump system on here driven by a Honda motor. And, uh, and it's got a 50 foot hose reel on here with it. So this is, uh, and it's got automatic shutoff, kind of a nice hose set up here that really you can reach out and, and uh, fill some equipment at, uh, at a heck of a distance. Yeah, yeah that's, that's real nice. Fill the neighbor's track. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that locks in and holds there and then release that lock system on there and, and then get the roll on it going back in. Yeah, very nice. So, he said he's got enough equipment now running in enough places where he thinks he needs a fuel system there to uh, to, uh, to take care of it all. Yeah, that 100 gallon fuel tank in the back of the truck just doesn't go far enough. So that's set up on there and that little Honda motor is a nice little Honda motor to take care of that. So that's... Uh, well, yeah, I haven't brought really too many of these in. I sold a 7550 here last week to another farmer that called me about one. And Andy, I talked to Andy about this 990 and he said he could use that. So we uh, we started to bring a few of these in there and maybe I'll start stocking some of those units there for, for future sales of stuff. So. so this wasn't a gift from Moss. I actually gave him a check actually... right when I drove in the dooryard here. So... I know some of these guys, they get these ones from whatever company, you know. I tried to get one of them. You know what they told me? What? You're going to use it too much. What we want to do is we want to just get it out there, show the people on YouTube, then we want to get that trailer back and sell it as a demo unit. Mm -hmm. You're going to use it too much. I said, well, <laughs> yeah, well that's, that's what you were looking for. It, I yeah, guess. yeah. So... so the other day, three of us were plowing. I had the, uh, well, we got just a 300 gallon tank on that one trailer. I was pulling it with my regular cab green Chevy. Had 100 gallons in the tank that was in the back of that, 300 gallons in the 300 gallon tank, yep. and it wasn't enough to fill the three tractors yeah, up. He said the 990 is usually the most popular tank, mm -hmm. you know, because I debate what size to bring in the 550. But you know, at the end of the day, the gallons that we're burning in these tractors, yeah. I mean, I think the 990 should be literally the one because how many more times do you need to go back to get? Food? Well, it's you might, you know, we're all spread out all over the place. There's no reason why you have you don't have to bring this home at night. Right. I mean, you no. could leave it there. 990 should be enough in most situations for two days. Right. That's right. It's only two, still two days. Get you two days. Yeah. So to buy anything less than a 990, I think for anybody who's playing big farmer, uh, you know, yeah. and then whether you want the def tank on it or not, if you don't, then you've actually got some more room up front to put some toolboxes mm -hmm. on here. Yeah. This has still got some more space. Uh, to put another box on here, you know, whether you got pry bars or right. uh, wrenches or tools, you know, the fuel trailer's always doing more besides mm -hmm. fueling up. So 
the little extra space they put on here is nice we can still go back on here and put more tools on here and then they put a rack on the top well you know who what uh, maybe throw some blocks up there and whatever yeah. else yeah. but uh you're always looking for stuff then they add another Ooh. rack on the side here for hoses or anything else you might want to yeah. put on so yeah but, uh so that just came in here a couple of days ago and we finished uh getting it ready here and andy swung down to pick it up here but, uh, nice little road trip you know get away a little bit yeah here's a little electric dry hill pump right here this is a uh, three inch uh electric pump system that dry hill makes and uh this is uh, i think a 10 foot pump here it's going up to flood brothers up in maine uh they buy a lot of pump stuff from me here and uh dry hill does a nice job uh hot dip galvanizing all their electric pumps and you can get that option on the uh on the uh they're probably going to use that too. like a leachade pit or something like that and the in the milk parlor you can order it with a nozzle on it and uh, <laughs> you can swing that nozzle back and the forth. agitation and uh <laughs> so they're using that same bearing house extension style at the bottom there between that and the propeller there but <laughs> those little electric pumps anywhere from from uh seven and a half horse to a 50 horse <laughs> uh we do all that all the way up through and they say a 50 horse electric pump is almost equal to a 100 horse tractor hook is that right huh. yeah the uh and you can get these all the way up to all the way up to 100 100 horse on these electric pumps hmm. so it, uh, we, we end up moving quite a few electric pumps into quite a few different style operations and hmm. uh so whether it's dairy manure or whether it's just parlor water or whatever that uh yeah it's a, they're a, they're a pretty popular pump mm -hmm. so but well we better get hooked on to this yeah. thing the ford should do fine pulling this home because yeah, it's well, empty you know yeah. it, it's empty if you so a gmc with a duramax there yeah you know, yeah you probably got home a half an hour quicker but if um you know work i'm not up to a show yeah to a i'm not GMC sure i'm gonna be able to that. use the ford tomorrow charlotte might say you know, i'm driving it to school but um we might have to hook the old green Chevy on this. Well, you know, that's probably all you need there. Yeah. That's still twice the power you probably need yeah. to do the job yeah. with, with the old Chevy yeah. on there. All uh, else fails, I could break out the Ram. Well, <laughs> I guess. All right, let's we'll get, get hooked up get hooked and up get her home. Away.